Yes, yes, yes. Hello, the family of Paul's pod. What are you saying? It's been a while. Uh, I feel like I haven't recorded in ages. I've been fucking well busy. Um, but don't worry. Going to be back to making some fucking banging content again. Um, today is another episode of Paul's pod. Well, it's not actually Paul's pod, I'm lying. It's punch up number three. A few fights to talk about, UFC to go over. It's been a fucking mad few weeks. Probably should have done this video a bit sooner, but why not? I'm a little bit stoned, in case you couldn't tell. I've uh, I've caught, uh, I had a six week break, a six week break of not doing anything, and back back to it, I guess. But nah, nah, nah. I'm not even talking that much, to be fair. But I'm I'm gonna take it on. Well, I'm gonna take it on board to to not smoke again when I start my fight camp in a couple of weeks. So might as well just have a few more here and there now. As long as it's not me, I, I I don't feel like it makes me. I'm not. This is not podcast anymore. Right, I'm chatting shit. The first fight we're going to go over, uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo. I'm not really the biggest boxing fan. Like I only really watch the big boxing fights. However, I am ridiculously excited for this fight. Uh, I think this is going to come out on the Friday, so this comes out. They're, well, they're fighting tomorrow night. Billy Joe Saunders, mate, I'm telling you now, poor. If I was to sit here and pretend that I knew what I was talking about in the Billy Joe Saunders fight, I'm not even going to begin to try and... And, and do a little breakdown of the fight. I just think, from what I know about boxing, which, granted, is a very short, uh, limited amount of knowledge, Canelo is a great boxer, but as Billy Joe Saunders and his team have been saying in, in, in the build-up to this fight, most fighters that fight Billy Joe are literally going for a paycheck or they're literally only going just to turn up. He's not fought anyone that's really given him a fight since Golovkin. And the first fight, Golovkin got robbed. Uh, it was not a draw. Um, one I remember one referee had and I think it was like 118 uh, to 111 for Canelo in that fight crazy um, but that's boxing for you stinks of fucking robberies um, I just think that obviously apart from Mayweather as well so it might, it might sound a bit crazy as well but Amir Khan yes he got knocked the fuck out of, uh, by Canelo granted um, and it, it was Kovalev as well Again, granted, I know that Canelo knocked him the fuck out, but they were outboxing him. Like they actually were. They were winning rounds and winning them pretty convincingly. I thought from the fights that I remember watching, um, and Canelo struggles against people that move around. And Billy Joel Saunders' movement is crazy. Um, that's the only real input I really have to talk about uh, for, for the for the Canelo fight. And uh, yeah, my boxing knowledge isn't that great, so I don't think it'd be a good idea for me to sit. At, sit here and try to break it down into full detail because I would be chatting out of my ass. I mean, I shout out of my ass anyway, but I think there's one especially. We had 57% of you um, say that Canelo was going to win. It's a lot of people. And Canelo was definitely the favourite. I think the odds are a bit disrespectful to Billy Joe Saunders. He's like the 5-1 to one underdog compared to Canelo, uh, which I think are pretty heavy odds. Like, there is... No, no one's given... Um, no one's given Billy Joe a chance. So, I'm excited. I'm working all weekend, so I'm going to have to wake up and go back to bed for it. But, it'll definitely be worth a watch. Could be one of the, could be the boxing fight of the year. 70,000 fans for the first time as well. And I think Billy Joe, from the build-up again, that I've seen the whole ring size issue. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Billy Joe was that arse. I think he's just trying to get Canelo arse. And even though Canelo might not look it, I think I think he might be a little bit asked. <laughs> UFC two sixty one. I think it was two sixty one. Crazy. That is one of the most entertaining UFC cards I've watched in a while. That card was crazy. First time they had a live crowd, they were in Florida. Um Usman and Masvidal, I was so convinced that Masvidal was gonna beat Usman. Maybe that was probably more because I wanted Usman to lose. Masvidal to win, but fair play to Usman, he absolutely smacked Masvidal. I have never ever seen Masvidal get hit like that or ever, ever be rocked in any of the fights I've ever watched. He got knocked out before in Pride, that was once before, that was before he was in the UFC, but wow, for Usman to do what he did to Masvidal is scary and ridiculously impressive, so, mate, he's, uh, he's a problem. He is a problem. I've seen McGregor call him out. Big McGregor fan. Don't know if that's the best move, I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, Usman's like the GOAT of the welterweight division, I think. 
Like, he would smash George St. Pierre. He fully would. I don't care what other people think. I think he would. Um, the fight with Colby Covington, I think, is the next fight that needs to happen because that was so close. Tom, you're probably watching this, but you thought Covington was winning the fight. Probably, I watched the back the other day. It was very close. Could have gone either way. That, that fifth round definitely should have been stopped. There's no way that should have been stopped. Um, that should have gone to points and uh, anyone could have had that fight. That fight is the closest fight Usman's ever had, so I'd love to see that fight again. However, we have also got Leon Edwards, who I will bring up in a bit. But yeah, man, Usman, Masvidal, fuck. Where'd you go now next for Masvidal? I think Masvidal, Nick Diaz, that sounds like a crazy fight. And you could even put up for the BMF. You could make that a main title UFC event. BMF title, Nick Diaz. He, brought, he beat his brother. Nate's fighting Leon next. Oh, Nick Diaz. Masvidal. Can you imagine that fight? That'd be stupid. That would be stupid. And it would do stupid numbers. So I think that's the next fight for, for Masvidal. Rose Namajunas. She is so soft-spoken. Such a sweetheart. Like everyone in the MMA community loves her to bits. She is an incredible woman. And she is a scary fucking fighter. She is ridiculously talented. She is, talk about goats of their division, she is the goat of the strawweight division. She beat Yuanning and Jacek twice. Yuanning and Jacek was on a seven fight winning streak. I think it was, I'm not sure it was seven, I don't think it was seven, seven title defenses, but I think it was seven fights in women's MMA in the UFC. That's That was the largest run um, before, obviously, Nunes. But fuck me. She beat Yuana Jacek when she was the beast. Like, everyone was afraid to fight her. And then Rose starched her in the first round. Madison Square Garden, UFC 217. Crazy card. That was Bisping and George St. Pierre and the guard run. Um, TJ fight the first one. But she smashed her that fight. And they, they fought again, rematch, went five rounds. She beat her in those five rounds. I think she won three. It was a close fight from what I remember. But Yuana Jacek definitely did lose that fight. She got... Knocked out by Jessica Andrade, which she was fucking her up in that fight, to be honest. I agree with Brendan Chubb when he says that it was a lucky kind of shot that she got slammed and knocked out. But she did get knocked out. Fair play. She avenged her loss, though, in a comeback fight. Beat her in, in three rounds. And then she's gone to fight Wei Li Zhang. 21 fight win streak. The only loss she had was her first MMA loss. Smashed everyone. Fought Yuan and Jacek and... Gave up one of the best fights I've ever seen in my entire life. The best women's fight ever. Best, of, Possibly one of the best fights I've ever seen. When Yoli and Jacek had that massive fucking hematoma on her head. So for Rose to come back and do what she did to Weili Zhang. Kill her, mate. That's obviously going to be the rematch next. But wow. That was ridiculous. Valentina Shevchenko. She's another killer. Mate, women's MMA has never been as good as it is now. It's fucking incredible to watch. The crazy thing is, she was fighting Jessica Andrade as well. Obviously, they were fighting a flyweight, not strawweight. Um, everyone was saying in the build-up, the only chance that Andrade is going to have is if it went to the floor, because Andrade is so much more powerful in that in that area. And then Valentina came out and just beat her at her own game, took her down with ease, smashed her with ease. Dominator on the ground with Eden. It only took two rounds and it was just another dominant performance by Valentina Shevchenko who is, again, a crazy fighter. And the crazy thing is, she's fought Nunes twice, lost justifiably the first time. The second fight, I watched that fight back. She lost by a split decision. I think, I think she could have won that fight. Again, it was one of those where it could have gone either way. But it was a split decision, so one judge actually had it winning for Shevchenko. And... Nunes is the GOAT of women's MMA. So that's how good she is. Dana White was obviously saying he wasn't sure if he wants to make that fight. Nunes has won, has won it twice. It gets to a sticky situation because she's actually won twice. If they fought again and Shevchenko wins, you're going to have to make number four. Four fights. Cruz and, and Faber had four fights, but... Then what happens if... Can you imagine five fights if Valentina wins the next two? I mean, I don't think so, but that would then require Valentina to go back up to Bantamweight, which obviously is in Nunes' favour because she 
juggles between 145 and 135 now, so... Ah, I love the UFC, man. I love the fucking talent they've got. It's just... I know people are boxing purist fans, and I can understand it. It's historical. It's gone through generations. But the UFC is just such a more interesting sport to follow. I think in America, it probably is bigger than boxing, but I don't think it's as big in the UK just because all the cards are run at fucking stupid o'clock, so you can't really get casual fans jumping in to watch it. But how could we not mention Chris Weidman? Wow. That is so weird that it happened to him out of all people because it's only happened twice in the UFC. I think it might have happened three times. No, definitely twice. And uh, it was well, he was he, it was he was in that fight. It was with Anderson Silva. Felt so sorry for him because middleweight champion, you know, good fighter, Chris Weidman, very good fighter. I think over his career when he became champion, got a bit lazy, didn't really take the same attitude to it. Um, that's what Anthony Smith was saying. He he was in his corner, uh, for well, he was in he was in his fight camp for the fight. He just looked like he was in ridiculous shape, and I think he would have beaten Uriah Hall. It was the best Chris Weidman I've probably seen since he was a champion. So I was looking forward to that fight massively, and mate, I wouldn't anyone that wishes something like that to happen on any athlete is fucked. That leg kick was awful. I never ever thought. No matter how crazy, and even though that has happened once, I never thought I'd watch a fight and see that happen. It was fucking weird. But, yeah. Weirdly, though, I don't know if anyone else is on the same page. I couldn't stop watching the replay for a day. It was fucking bizarre. It was grim to watch, but I, I kept on watching it. Uh, maybe I'm just fucking weird. So, UFC 262, the next big pay-per-view. We've got the lightweight belt up for grabs, the vacant lightweight belt. Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. That is a crazy fight. Close fight. Very, very close fight. Both of them are unbelievable strikers. Um, maybe more so Chandler is a better striker, but Oliveira can... Oh, some of his submissions are just ridiculous. Like They get you from anywhere. And it's a really close fight to call. I think both of them are well-rounded fighters. Um... Both of them can finish you standing up or on the ground. And that's what makes the fight so so interesting. I think obviously Dustin Poirier fighting McGregor, he would have had to fight for the belt, obviously. But he's obviously taken the money route and, and fought McGregor for the third time. That, should really, that needs to happen. And I can't wait for that to happen. So you're left with Oliveira and Chandler. And honestly, I always say this to, to anyone that, that puts on bets. They're always like, oh, what do you think? Who do you think I should bet on for this fight? The UFC is so unpredictable. Like, it is the hardest thing to predict. You can sit here and break down and analyse a, a fight and go to extreme depths. But I don't even know who's going to win. I think because I'm a McGregor fan, I would love to see. I think Chandler is an... I think, if I look at who's an easier fight for McGregor, Chandler or, or Oliveira, I think Chandler is an easier fight for McGregor, and I want them to see McGregor fight for the belt and win the belt back. So, by that knowledge, or by that narrative, if you like, I'd like Chandler to win the belt, because then I think McGregor, if he beat Poirier, which I think he could as well, fight Chandler for the belt, I think he wins. I think Oliveira is a much harder fight for McGregor. And people are sleeping on Oliveira. He's a UFC veteran and he's not even 30. He's had a crazy amount of fights, a crazy amount of wins. So I don't think there's going to be any walk in the park. As much as I love Chandler, I do think Oliveira might do it. I really do. I've just got a sneaky feeling. I don't know if it's going to go with points or a submission, but I think Oliveira might just edge it. That's my prediction. I've asked you guys, 67% of you thought Chandler, so it's a pretty big margin. Um... I don't know. This year's been full of surprises, so again, anything can happen. I'm pissed off, Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards. That should have been a co-main event. First time, by the way, first time in the UFC history that they were going to put a co-main non-title fight five rounds. It never happened, but shows the star power that Nate Diaz has. And again, if I go to the poll, 55% of you thought Diaz was going to win. And I'm honest, that's more than I expected. I think... I think Nate Diaz is a great fighter, 
but he got fucked by Masvidal. I don't know how far he's improved because we haven't seen him since that fight, which was almost two years ago. It was over a year ago. So, <sighs> Liam Edwards is a beast. I know he's not really fought and he's been a bit inactive because of everything that's happened. He's just been on the end of a bad bad string of luck. And that whole Belal Muhammad fight, fucking hell, that is unlucky. There's nothing you could do about that. They make the UFC need new gloves, but that's a different issue. Liam Edwards is a killer. And I'm back at him in this fight. I think, like I said, I'm a massive Nate Diaz fan, but I don't think him losing to Liam Edwards in a five-round fight is necessarily the end of his career. Because Leon Edwards, like I said, he's ranked number three, ranked a lot higher. Um, Nate Diaz is still fighting the best of the best. And that trilogy with McGregor is never going to go away. So I don't think he really loses that much star power. Um, but yeah, people are sleeping on Leon Edwards, man. He's English. Everyone needs to get behind him. As much as I love Nate Diaz, I'm back in the English winning this fight. But yeah, that's been postponed. It was meant to be next weekend and it's now... Moved on to UFC 263, which is Davison Figueiredo and Moreno for the flyweight belt. Flyweight rematch they drew last time. Crazy fight. Um, and then Marvin Vittori is having a rematch with Adesanya. So that's a good card to be put on. Um, and I'm excited for it. But yeah, I'm a bit pissed off. Long. And the last fight to go over. El Kukui, Tony Ferguson. He's back. Fighting Benuel Darish, uh, who is a good fighter. Got a great knockout of Drakkar Close. If anyone doesn't know, go watch that knockout. Um, and a lot of you were actually back in Tony Ferguson, which I'm glad to see. I think that's the first one um, on the polls that we've done for this episode that I've agreed with. Um, yeah, people are writing Tony off. He's, mate, he's the underdog in the fight. He's not even the favourite. So... Fuck knows how that's happened. Again, just like like you said, with if, if, if Nate Diaz loses to Mazadon Leon Edwards, he's still fighting the best of the best. Tony Ferguson, even though he's lost to Khabib, they didn't fight Khabib, even though he's lost to Gaethje um, and then lost to Oliveira, look at these guys, man. They're, they're, they're the top of the lightweight. So, Benuel Darish hasn't really fought anyone like Tony Ferguson, and I think that's going to show. I think Tony Ferguson will have an e not an easy night, but I think he'll stop him. I, I think he'll be able to finish him either standing up or on the ground. Um, I think Tony Ferguson's still got a, good, a couple of good fights left in him. He's not looked too good in his last two fights. Obviously, he's been smashed. But I can't write off El Kukui. He was He's too good of a fighter to just write off. And Dari Reish hasn't really had anyone like that in his career. So it's a test to him as well. I think... Tony Ferguson has obviously got a lot more to lose than this other guy, which normally favours the other guy. So there is that side of things, but Tony Ferguson is the man. If you did like this video, um, it would mean the world to me if you could just give it a like down below. But yeah, I hope everyone has a good week, a good time, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, enjoy it. And we'll see you soon.